Hello everyone and welcome to Samuel's Racing Show and here we are then, we are coming up to the final race of a 2020 NASCAR Cup Series Championship after the Championship 4 was determined last weekend at Martinsville. Now my schedule's been a little bit crazy because I live in Atlanta now so I didn't reach out to James uh, to help me put this show on because I had absolutely no idea what time I was going to do this so you're simply going to get my opinions here on on who I think is going to win the championship four, the re um out of a championship four for this NASCAR Cup Series finale. The reason I bring James up is uh, him and I made an episode uh, a couple months ago uh, where we went bracket style through the 16 drivers who are in NASCAR's playoff system, and we narrowed it down from 16 to eight to four to two until we finally determined who we believed the champion would be, which. Could still be correct. We selected Danny Hamlin as our potential uh, champion, and he is one of the final four drivers. The most notable thing, of course, is that Kevin Harvick is not. And Kevin Harvick is a driver that James and I both assumed would get to the final four. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of controversy over uh, Harvick not making the final four because people who don't like NASCAR's playoff system, which at times includes myself, uh, think it's unfair that a driver who has won nine races this season has not made it into the championship fight when NASCAR's new point system is supposed to reward drivers who win races. Obviously, there's a bit of an issue there. But the thing is, given that NASCAR does have this playoff system, Kevin Harvick, in a race when it counted, spent most of a race in 20th to 25th position. And that's not exactly a championship winning performance. I I know it didn't have to be because Phoenix is a race where it counts, but it was a race that was critical towards the championship and Harvick didn't put it together. And honestly, uh, someone brought up a good point. I think it was uh, one of my fellow Lionheart drivers on Twitter that... It was a bit of an unsportsmanlike move by Harvick attempting to dump Kyle Busch in the final turn because, granted, he would have been out anyways, but he would have only been out by one position, and all it would have taken is one driver to fail post-race inspection that finished ahead of Harvick that would have bumped him back in maybe to the championship for. It almost reminded me a little bit of um, Lewis Hamilton trying uh, to back up Nico Rosberg into uh, Max Verstappen when Hamilton realised he wasn't going to win the 2016 Formula One World Championship in the position that he was in. in. And the reason I draw that similarity is it's like when all bets were off, Hey, the heating just came on. That's the first time I've heard that in this apartment. All right, the heating works. When uh, when all bets were off, you know, when it looked like, okay, I'm not going to be in championship position in the current situation that I'm in, Kevin Harvick, much like Lewis Hamilton in 2016, much you could even say like Michael Schumacher in 1997 as he was getting passed by Jacques Villeneuve, made a move of desperation to try and protect their championship chance rather than wait to the end of a race and see, you know, if uh, if something could have gone their way post-race, perhaps. You know, it... it is I guess what I'm trying to say is, is your reputation really worth that move? If you had made that move and had it been successful, was that championship really worth it? Um, going back, had Michael Schumacher won the 97 championship by taking out Jacques Villeneuve, would have that really been worth it. Uh, Had Lewis Hamilton won the 2016 Formula One World Championship by 
uh, causing Rosberg and Verstappen to crash behind him or whatever. Would have that really been worth it? And you know what? The thing is, if you asked Schumacher or Hamilton or um, Harvick at the time, they probably would have said yes. That that's the way they're they're mentally wired. But I don't know. It just it just kind of tarnished Harvick's reputation a tiny little bit, in my opinion. But that's just a thought. Uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about him, and I'm meant to be talking about the Championship 4, and guess what? He's not one of those, so let's talk about the Championship 4. And particularly, let's talk about how they fared in the bracket that James and I put together a couple months ago. So, Brad Kozolowski, um, he's one of the drivers going to be fighting for the Championship, and he was one of those that uh, James and I knocked out very early on in our bracket because we had him up against Kyle Busch, and uh, James kind of made the argument that he thought Kyle Busch would, uh, you know, start to get his act together, win a race, and um, get himself perhaps into that final four, and I tended to agree with him. And you know what? He did win a race. It just came a little bit too late, and so he's not in the championship four. Um, but so good on Kozolowski for proving everyone, or at least proving James and I wrong and making it to the final four. Uh, we obviously had Hamlin in our final four. And then to our defense, we had Joey, sorry, we had um, Trace Elliott in our final four, but not Joey Logano. But the reason is they were in the same quadrant. They were in the same corner of four names, so only one of those two could make it to our final four, the way I set up the bracket up. So, uh, you, you know what, um, maybe maybe had we had them in different corners, we would have gotten both Elliot and Logano in our final four. So, uh, for those of you wondering, when it came down to Elliot, uh, Trace Elliott and Jerry Logano in the bracket that James and I did, we had Elliot advance to the final four and Logano get knocked out in our round of eight or whatever you want to call that. Um, a couple of other m- m- honourable mentions I wanted to make before we move on to who my championship prediction are. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., he performed very well throughout the season, and it's unfortunate that a mechanical issue, cut, you know, it, it was looking tricky anyway for him to get in, but the mechanical issue he had with his car at the end of a Martinsville race kind of put him out. Um, but still, he did did a great season and uh, hope to see more from him in the future. I'm very optimistic for Alex Bowman. Um, he He's done a great season and obviously I think uh, great things could be happening for him in the future as well. So great job for Bowman, not in the championship four, but watch him in the future. All right. So let's talk about the championship for the, for the NASCAR Cup Series. I emphasize NASCAR Cup Series because I'm not too concerned about the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. I hate how they have a championship for, to be honest. Those are, those are meant to be series that are kind of building drivers up to the top, to the top series, where you're trying to get a driver to make a name for themselves. I don't know if the playoff system is necessary in those divisions I, I think it's kind of you, you watch a race for the racing anyway because the racing is normally better in Xfinity and trucks than uh, the cup series anyway so you know why not reward the driver who puts the best championship together and then people can legitimately say hey this is the driver performer of the season They'll do well in Cup or if they're in trucks, they'll do well in Xfinity next year. Um, I don't know. I'm 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 not as much of a fan of the playoffs in uh, those series as I am in the Cup series. Granted, I'm not a big fan of the playoff system in the Cup series either, but whatever. It's what we're stuck with. Okay. Um. So let's start. Uh. Let's go through the order I listed them off a moment ago. Kozlowski. I have no reason to believe he will win the championship. I have no reason to believe he won't. Honestly, I haven't thought on it a whole lot because I wasn't anticipating him to be one of the final four. So, uh, you know, we'll put him as a driver who could get it done. Well, they could all get it done, but that's all I'm going to say is that I think he can get it done. Uh, Denny Hamlin, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick with what I've been saying all season. 
Um, I kind of committed early in the season to saying he'll win the championship, so I've got to stick with that. It's not what I believe anymore, but it's what I'm going to have to say, so put that down on paper. Um, Trace Elliott, he hasn't fought for a championship in the cup level before. Doesn't mean he can't get it done, uh, but much like uh, Denny Hamlin... So this going back to why I have my doubts on Denny Hamlin. Uh, Trace Elliott and Hamlin seem to have mistakes on pit road every now and then. I was kind of surprised that Trace Elliott got away with that Drackman being over the wall and then touching the wall again at Martinsville. I was surprised that that Drackman and the team got away with that. But uh, I was just watching the NASCAR race hub uh episode and they pointed out that the rule says that if the if a crew member does go back to the wall to reset themselves that uh that can result in a penalty being waived so it's in the rule book uh kudos to that track man for knowing that and i guess he's smarter than everyone else because i think he was the only one who knew that rule um so he's a driver i haven't mentioned yet joey logano um, I think, you know, he, he's fought for a championship like this way before and came out on top when he was an underdog and no one was talking about him. I think that's very similar to what we're seeing here. Even though he was the first driver to lock himself into the championship four, which has gave him a bit of a breather, uh, more relaxed state of mind probably over the last couple of weeks and allowed the team to prepare for Phoenix a bit more than uh, the other teams can afford to. I think many people still see him as a bit of an underdog. He's definitely not the fan favourite out there. Um, and I think they're wrong to think of him as the underdog because he's proven he can do it in the past. It, unless I'm mistaken, I believe Team Penske's performances are uh, normally strong at Phoenix. And I don't see any reason to believe he can't get it done. So my brain says Joey Logano is going to win the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. The fact that all season long I've been saying I think Danny Hamlin will win it, and I'm kind of uh, committed to continuing to say that. I guess I'll say that my official pick is Danny Hamlin, but honestly I won't be surprised one bit if it's Joey Logano. But it will be interesting to see. Um, even though Kevin Harvick's not there fighting for the championship, I think we still have four very strong performers. NASCAR's obviously set up an exciting point system because the last couple of races have been uh, quite entertaining to watch from a championship perspective. And it'll be interesting to see which driver gets it done on Sunday. Hope you all enjoy the shows and uh, enjoy the races. We've got some other series racing this weekend. I believe uh, MotoGP are racing in Valencia. And, um, yeah, hope you enjoy it all, and uh, we'll see you all around.